Hey guys, so it's currently 1.30 in the morning. I can't sleep and um, yeah, so I'm just gonna make a video. Uh, we're gonna talk about my application and specifically everything that I did on my application, my essays, um, my extracurricular activities, and my letter to rec, and just about every aspect of my application. Um, so yeah, I really hope you all enjoy. Okay, hey guys, so this is my application. Let me see if I can full screen it. Okay, there we go. So, obviously blocking out things that are important to me and that should not be shared, except for my email. My email is free reign. Y'all can have my email and email me things um, appropriate, of course. Uh, any questions, uh, if you wanna send me your essay, I'd be more than happy to look, look it over for you uh, and suggest some edits. Um, yeah, but without further ado, <laughs> these are all the Texas medical schools that I applied to. I did not apply to Baylor, but, uh, because I passed, I, um, missed the deadline and yeah, but these are all the Texas medical schools I applied to. I got an interview at Texas Tech and at... Dell Medical School and um, I got accepted to both but I ultimately chose slash match to Dell Medical School. Okay. Um, yeah so that stuff and then this is a high school I went to yada 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 y'all can look at that if you want to. The schools I went to um, this is just like this is me being as transparent as possible as I can without compromising my own personal information. Um, this is actually hilarious. So I messed up on my application. Um, and this was very heartbreaking when I realized it. And I'm really glad that it didn't uh, negatively impact me as an applicant, at least I don't think it did. Um, so yeah, so the question was, do you consider yourself a non-traditional applicant? I put yes, and then it describes, it's asked me to describe the factors that have defined me as a non-traditional candidate and how they impact my application. And I put later, I put later, literally I put later. And this was a note to myself. This was supposed to be like, oh, I'm gonna go back to it later and get it. So I was trying to get through the application to see what it's all about and everything. But oh my goodness, I literally put later, like, I just hope that they just didn't see it, honestly. Like, I don't know. Uh, this stuff, yeah, okay. Um, you can know my birthday. My birthday is 221, 99. Um, year, 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 demographic stuff, demographic stuff, personal information stuff, yada, yada, yada. Okay, boom, my essay. So we're gonna go. Explain your motivation to seek a career in medicine. Be sure to include the value of the experiences that prepare you to be a physician. So I'm just gonna start reading. Um, trigger warning. Trigger warning in general, there are, uh, what's it called? Topics of abuse in this, my application. There are topics of mental health and struggles with mental health and gun violence. So just prepare yourself if uh, if you still want to stick around and um, hear my story. I will also give a trigger warning again before I talk about specifically those inst instances that those topics come up, but just as a fair warning um, that is mentioned at some point in this video. Um, okay. It was a typical Saturday. I was in line at the movie theater with my family when an employee and I suddenly made eye contact. I didn't know who she was, but I could tell she knew me. It wasn't long before she was right in front of me and with soft, sincere eyes, she thanked me. At that moment, I immediately knew what she was talking about. She was thanking me for the Let's Talk Mental Health Awareness event I had put together a few weeks before in the summer of 2018. At that event, I partnered with community organizations in the city of Beedale. Together, we combated the stigma on mental health. We also showcased local resources and raised money for the Coastal Plains Community Center in Beedale. Aside from this being a major public health issue, I have witnessed close family members, including my parents, suffer from serious mental health conditions for years. More specifically, my mother has paranoid schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and postpartum psychosis, while my father has issues with alcoholism and bipolar disorder. 
Throughout my childhood, my parents were in and out of mental institutions, rehab, and even jail. In high school, when I became aware of their conditions, I had a hard time understanding what they meant, especially because none of my family members matched the idea I had in my head of what someone with a disease looked like. They didn't look frail, have chills, a runny nose, or a rash, for example. As a result of these experiences and emotional attachments with mental health, I became interested in investigating it from a scientific perspective. This is when I decided to pursue higher education in science so I could eventually help people like my parents. During my first year at the University of Texas as a biology major, I joined a research lab where I helped investigate the phenotypic effects of phosphorylation on a transcription factor in a wheat species. From that experience, I learned how to think critically, how to write, read and write scientific papers, and how to work with other researchers. After a year in the lab, I became a mentor where I had the privilege of training students and grading their lab reports so they could eventually join an ongoing research project as I did. From these experiences, I grew a lot of admiration and respect for conducting research. This inspired me to attend a panel of research physicians where the common theme was how immensely valuable their research had been for them, had been for their medical practice and vice versa. More specifically, how research has allowed them to evaluate their practice in a more robust, meaningful way and to stay up to date on the latest cutting edge treatments for their patients. After hearing their stories, I knew that I too wanted to carve my niche or niche in research as a physician. <laughs> I think it's niche, uh, okay. In the coming months, I shout out a family medicine physician assistant and a gastroenterologist. At both of these opportunities, I marveled at the immense responsibility and depth of knowledge that they had in their specialties. My favorite part about family medicine was the ability to form long-term doctor-patient relationships. At the same time, whenever they had to refer patients to a specialist, I couldn't help but wonder what, how they were doing, what unique procedures or insight they were provided, and if such treatments were helpful at all. So when I shadowed the gastroenterologist and witnessed some of the procedures they do, I knew right away that I want, wanted to be the person patients get referred to. Taking this into consideration, it was clear to me that my purpose in life is to help people with mental health conditions live a happier and healthier life and conduct research to deepen the medical field's understanding of such conditions, improving existing treatments and potentially discover better treatment alternatives. Outside of my emotional and professional investments with mental health, there is an undeniable need for mental health professionals, especially in small rural towns like my hometown. Communities like my own are best served by those who are both culturally sensitive to them and the stigmas on mental health. This is why after medical school, I intend to return to a place that helps me become who I am today. This is particularly important to me because when I think about the girl I saw in the movie theater, I can only imagine the heartache she and her family had endured and how it could have been less stressful if they had only known about and had easy access to better resources. For many years, mental health has been an overarching theme in my life. Despite this, I'm incredibly grateful that I've been able to channel my adversity into something positive. I look forward to the day that my aspirations are made into a reality and I can simultaneously unravel the stigma on mental health, contribute to the medical community through research, and help those with mental health conditions contain a healthier and fulfilling life. <laughs> and boom, that's the first essay, guys. So as you can tell, there's a clear theme of mental health in my um, first essay and in general in my application, as you will see in the coming uh, pages. Um, yeah, so we're going to keep going. This is the second essay. Briefly discuss any unique circumstances or life experiences that are relevant to your application which have not previously been presented. Okay, this is interesting. Okay, so they put, this is the optional essay. They ordered this one second. What is this? Okay. Okay, cool. So this is a trigger warning. Uh, I talk about abuse. I talk about, um, um gun violence or police violence particularly and mental health my struggles with mental health so yeah just a fair warning um okay as someone who has endured much adversity i cannot properly express how i overcame them and became who i am today without providing some context for instance as a child i internalized most of my parents delusions and paranoia that stemmed from their untreated mental illnesses at the same time, from four to 12 years old, I was sexually abused by multiple people. When I was 13, my grandfather, who was also one of my legal guardians, tragically passed away from liver cancer. Six months later, my uncle was shot and killed by police during a manic bipolar episode. These events, as you may imagine, have had a significant impact on my mental health. I began therapy as a junior in high school, which was enough until the COVID-19 pandemic. During quarantine, I began to have more intense and frequent panic attacks, depressive episodes, and trauma-related flashbacks. In late July of 2020, I finally sought out psychiatric treatment, which led to the official diagnosis of PTSD, social anxiety disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, and major depressive disorder. Since then, I have been taking my medications, going to trauma therapy, and developing healthier coping mechanisms and routines to better manage my symptoms. 
While this was all happening, I was enrolled in a summer class, studying for the MCAT, working on my medical school application, reliving trauma, and coping with having multiple family members lose their jobs, their homes, and even their lives to COVID-19. Despite these tough circumstances, I have actually learned a lot of valuable lessons. For example, I gained a deeper understanding of the privilege I have in being able to ask for help, to afford such assistance, and to even have a supportive network of people. I also learned how to be the patient, how to advocate for myself, and how to identify changes in my mental and physical state so that I track and relay the information to my doctors. In this way, having lived through so much adversity has pushed me to gain a greater perspective on life, an increased level of compassion for others, and to identify my strengths and weaknesses so that I can help build a routine, build a routine that best supports me. With that said, I hope my transparency helps paint a better picture of who I am, where I come from, and the doctor I want to be. Okay, so obviously hefty uh, mental health, big theme, but I also touched on how I, what I learned from my experience. It's not just trauma porn. It's my experiences as an individual that are relevant to my application um, and that they deserve to know. I am open enough for them to know that and I'm open enough for the world to know because I think it's important to destigmatize mental health and um, also, what's it called? I did learn a lot from my experiences in the system of psychiatry and mental health and therapy and like seeing my parents go through that uh, or lack thereof of them going through that. Actually, they're untreated for a very, or are untreated for, uh, have been for a very long time. Um, so I have very close connections to mental health and because of that, I have a deep passion for fixing the system from within and out um, in my own way. And so, yeah, so let's go ahead and move on to the next essay. Okay. Learning from others is enhanced in educational settings that include individuals from diverse backgrounds and experiences. Please describe your personal characteristics, backgrounds, talents, skills, et cetera, or experiences that would add to the educational experience of others. Okay. At the beginning of my undergraduate career, I was very anxious and confused when it came to things like financial aid and class registration. Thankfully, resources like academic advising were incredibly helpful in alleviating the confusion, which was critical in me staying in college, especially as a first-generation college student. This inspired me to become a peer academic advisor to return the favor and to help other disadvantaged students. In that position, I realized I was not the only one with such insecurities, nor was I the only one that greatly appreciated their advisor's guidance and words of encouragement. I also really enjoyed working with the students to make their personalized degree plan. This meant I had to prioritize what they were telling me verbally and non-verbally and ask questions frequently to make sure we were on the same page. In retrospect, that whole process was incredibly similar to how medicine is practiced. Furthermore, that position gave me the tools I needed to take the initiative to create the Let's Talk Mental Health event. This event aimed to bring the local and online mental health resources to the people in my hometown in the form of a fair. Due to the nature of this goal, it was extremely important for me to make the event as inclusive as possible. This was done by making posters and inviting organizations that represent veterans, the elderly, adults, children, and young adults. What made it even more interesting was that my co-organizers were my high school peers. This meant we had to find the right balance between being friends, being productive, and holding each other accountable. To do this, we kept track of what, we need to, what needs to be done, what was accomplished, and what can be improved. We also provided statistics about the mental, health, mental illness, illnesses of the respective population to debunk any common misconceptions. This event was both the hardest and most fulfilling activity I have done so far, and I'm ecstatic to just looking back at the number of people we helped and the lasting legacy we created in our small community. All these experiences gave me many transferable skills that also, that's also useful as a physician. For example, I have developed organizational skills, consideration and expression of empathy, and advocacy for underrepresented populations. As a physician, I intend to teach and further improve these skills as well as learn from my team of healthcare providers. Okay, so again, mental health, big theme, but also I tell a story through my mental health advocacy of the characteristics of, of me that would add to others, my skills, my background, my talents, uh, my organization, my hardworking, my resiliency, my ability to work with others, my organizational skills, like I said that already, but you know, you get the point. Um, so yeah, all that in one make a cohesive and uh, remem memorable, I almost said rememberable, memorable application. And I think that's what I accomplished. Okay, so the rest of this is my awards, academic recognition. We can go through this real quick. 
um, so you have an idea of like what kind of application application what kind of an applicant I was am um, was that's the right one <laughs> it's two o'clock in the morning guys bear with me um, okay so I had an academic excellence award my GPA at the end is a 3.9 uh, so at UT they do a lot of recognitions of that throughout your semesters here excuse me so this is one of them and y'all can read this if y'all want to. I'm not gonna read it though. And then search award for best FRI poster. I was in research, which I mentioned in my essay. And in that we presented our poster about the protein. Um, and um, yeah, we got the search award for it amongst other freshman research initiative posters. Second year excellence award. This was another one um, that I was nominated for for uh, good grades, basically. College of Natural Sciences College Scholar. This is another uh, grade-related distinction. Uh, another grade-related distinction, College Scholar. I Care Award, this one was really sweet. This was from my, um, this was staff nominated um, when I was a peer academic advisor for being empathetic, understanding, and patient with my students. So this was a really nice award. I really appreciated this award because it really means a lot to me. Like I really enjoyed my time there. I kind of wish I, did. I never quit like um, being a peer academic advisor. I really like that position. Okay, and then leadership organizer, let's talk mental health event. Um, there's some more information here I didn't, that I didn't include in my essay. Confirmed attendance of organization, asked for donations, held weekly meetings, held, had the county judge and licensed therapists as guest speakers. We designed and ordered t-shirts, pins, and made informative posters. Like we did a lot um, for the mental health event. And it wasn't just one time, we did it twice. We did it um, summer 2018 and summer 2019, I think that's what it was, yeah. And then peer academic advisor, um, you can read this if you want to. I was a resource lab mentor. Uh, you can also read this if you want to. And, I uh, did undergraduate research, like I mentioned in my essay. And this talks about specifically the methodology that I used, um, which was important. And then healthcare activities. So this includes healthcare related community service, volunteer employment, or shadowing experience activities. So uh, Chris Spawn Health Clinic Shadow, I shadowed at Chris Spawn Health Clinic in BVL. I observed family medicine physician assistant, uh, assess his patients, perform past me, perform physicals, make prescriptions, and make plans of action for the patient's treatment. And uh, I noted that the doctor was on vacation for the entire time I was there because I thought that was important to note because he was essentially, the physician assistant there was essentially the doctor um, for the community, for my community. And less time mental health. Um, kind of reiterating some of the things I already mentioned. There's the total hours. These all have the total hours there and hours per week, roughly. Um, and then Otto Kaiser Memorial Hospital Student Shadow. That's when I shadowed the gastroenterologist. It was literally like a day, but it was still monumental in my experience. And Chris is one Bebo ER volunteer. Excuse me. This was a rough, experience because um, there's so much shortage, there's so many shortages in um, healthcare that impact small communities like my own that I had firsthand experience in witnessing. And it's sad, it's very sad. And the quality of um, like evidence-based medicine isn't as popular in these smaller rural communities because again, like it's just not as much of a demand for it. Um, and there's no bad mouthing at all. It's just a matter of like recognizing the disparities and realizing that there needs to be, there's a, there's a lot that needs to change. Okay. And then St. Damon's Hospital Volunteer. I volunteered at, at the gift shop. I was going to be able to volunteer in the hospital more in like a clinical setting, but because of COVID, I couldn't do that. Community service activities. I was in Quinonia outreach volunteer. This is a church organization I was involved in for a long time. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
And so, yeah, you can see the total hours I put in. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then uh, Explore UT, I did this for multiple years. Um, and it's basically in a, like a big open house event at UT where they uh, do a lot. It's kind of hard for me to even explain, but I directed crowd towards fun with chemistry event in 2018 and in 2019, I helped set up information tents and give directions, water bottles, et cetera, et cetera. Cause there's like tod like not toddlers, but like children that come and like teenagers, uh, high school students that come, other people like parents that come and it's a big event. Uh, street youth ministry. Um, this particularly targets the, um, the youth displaced by the foster care system. So they um, make food, they provide resources like uh, mental health resources to them, uh, clothing, toiletries, uh, you name it, like they provide it, activities, things like that. And I helped and um, doing organizing some of that. Not organizing, but like organizing their supplies, I mean, is what I meant. Micah like Six Food Pantry, they target the homeless. Um, and other uh, houseless individuals. And yeah, so it's a food pantry where they have a lot of uh, food that comes in and they need to be organized and like handed out to people, things like that. You need to watch the homeless uh, belongings that are there and make sure that it gets back to them when they're done shopping around. Shopping around, it's free, but yeah. Peronia Angel Tree Volunteer. This was a really, I really enjoyed this. Um, experience because I got to shop for gifts and deliver them to a family of six with an incarcerated parent in financial need. Um, and like I said in here, it was a very emotional visit to me because I've been in a similar circumstances before. My dad was incarcerated, uh, as I kind of mentioned in my essay, and this was just something that just meant a lot to me to do, and I wanted to make that known. Um, it's a health talk at AC Jones High School. Yeah, so I was invited to talk about my mental health event that I ran at my high school. Um, and I talk about Ms. Patel who invited me and she taught counseling and mental health at my old high school. And I talked to them about how I organized it. And it was like a 25 minute presentation about that. And it was really, really cool. Really enjoyed doing that. And then the Beaver Vineyard, this is like another like food pantry situation, just a little bit larger um, and more established, I wanna say, question mark for what it is like in Beaver. So there I organized, oh my God, organized, you get what I'm saying. Hygiene products, please don't do this. Be better than me. Hygiene products, cleaning supplies, clothing and food donations from community members and local grocery stores. And then leisure activities, uh, Coronia, um, I helped prepare food for the Bible study, which was like, for like, of course, like 200 people at a time. Like it was a lot of people. Had an average of 100 people, 10, okay, so 100, oops. Uh, like 100 people. Okay. I also helped clean up after Bible study and Sunday service. On Wednesdays, I attended prayer meetings. And on Thursday, I attended a small group study. Although I'm not involved with it anymore, uh, I spent a lot of time doing that. And I don't regret it. It was still a worthwhile experience. Um, but that just shows commitment and longevity and everything like that. It's not the reason why I did it, but um, at the time. But yeah. Anyway, okay. Texas Latin dance. Love this, love Latin dance. I love dancing. Um, okay. Two hour practices uh, were bachata, cumbia, merengue, and salsa. And show up when you with friends at monthly dance socials and stuff. Really fun. Texas Fuego, oh my gosh. I love Texas Fuego. It's a spirit group, um, Latinx spirit group at UT. Didn't really get to do as much because COVID. But uh, we did a lot of um, charity and like volunteer events, and then they also had social events too. Veterinary don't apply. And then my employment is my employment history. Uh, I was my first ever job was a kennel technician at a veterinary hospital. Um, and you can read what I did there. Uh, basically, helped with vaccinations, nail clippings, water therapy, skin dip treatments to clients. Uh, and I also daily walked, walked, mopped, slept, and took out garbage and like fed and walked the clients twice a day, which are the pets. Um, it was actually a very dirty job. A lot of cleaning up poop and vomit and piss. 
Um, it's underpays, to be honest. <laughs> I don't recommend it. But if you want to build character, go for it. <laughs> It'll definitely humble you. Okay. Uh, deli associate. Work at Walmart in the deli area. Sliced deli meats and cheeses, fulfilled deli orders, decorated cupcakes and cakes. Also fried and served food, made sandwiches and salads, marked down prices of items, and clean rotisserie chicken oven, the fryer, the work benches, and deli slices on a daily basis. And that is all true. Not that nothing else was true at all. I'm just like, emphasizing that I did all of that stuff because it was a lot of stuff. And I'm proud of myself because I actually enjoyed it. It was a lot of variety enough to be interesting and to be uh, stimulating. So I really like, liked it. It's pretty good. Okay, Adam, the previously listed activities indicate your top three most meaningful and explain why. So these are like smaller essays, um, as you can kind of tell. They all fit on one page, so it's not too bad. Um, so yeah, so let's go ahead and read these. The public health issue and the stigma we have on mental health has driven close friends and family members of mine to suffer in silence out of fear of judgment for their conditions. This is why I organized my most meaningful experience, the Let's Talk Mental Health event, so that I could showcase local researchers to bunk the stigma and show them and anyone else with similar experiences that they aren't alone, their conditions are valid, and the community as a whole supports them. When I was a mentee, I struggled with feeling competent enough to be in a research lab. Thankfully, the mentors at the time helped me become more confident by encouraging me to ask for help, make mistakes, and to keep trying. Now as a mentor myself, it's been extremely fulfilling to help my students the way I was helped. In addition to this, I've enjoyed being a part of their growth as a student and creating an environment that welcomes them and makes them feel like they belong. Three, I cherish my time as uh, a pre academic advisor because I was able to help first year students, many of which were minor minorities and are first generation like myself, navigate confusing processes like registering for classes. In relieving, relieving some of their anxiety about their classes, they were able to focus their energy on more important things like deciding on a degree on a, oh God, why did I do that? on a degree or a career path. Doing this meant a lot to me because I remember how lost and overwhelmed I felt when I was in their shoes not long ago. No wonder I didn't get so many interviews. Jesus Christ, no. Okay. So, I'm back to leave. So these are all the activities I plan to do. I plan to be student volunteer for science and for all which I've done. We just have been telling from that. And then these are all, um, Oh, uh, stuff in summary. Yeah, this uh, stuff in summary. And these are my grades. I'd be not perfect, but it was actually 89. This is from this is from birth credit. This is from birth credit. I'm not being calculus because that's stupid. <laughs> and then, yeah, you can just be there. This should be a credit. I could I passed it in this class instead of because I just my ego is too fragile. And then these are my after those are evaluation. So I got um one for my research physical investigator, another for my academic advisor. Another from a uh, former professor, and then another one from my research assistant that I shot of. That's fine. And then that's it. But yeah, I really hope that you all enjoyed that and that my transparency is helpful to me to somebody. Um, and I am open to any questions and comments, concerns, and the comment section and all to my email that I, feel, that I provided in this video. And um, oh, and then I have another video that I may upload that I may not upload. It's like a weekly vlog, but I kind of forgot in between like most of my like multiple days in a row or like filming, and I just kind of like put it together anyway. But I think it has some related comments in it. So let me just upload it anyway and see how draw that I can and just see. Yeah. yeah. Um, so thought for that. And it's not gonna be that eventful. Or oh, whatever. I'll just switch on that you can watch it. I know some people like to just like hang out and chill. Um excuse me. What else?
oh, uh, I got to pay for my first apartment. If you want a move in tour or move in blog stuff, let me know. I may do it anyway, so you don't have to let me know, but you know, let me know if you want to see it. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Thank you.